Hi and welcome to today's video. I am so excited to be filming this. Today is my introduction for the Welcome to the Hellmouth project pan. This is a Buffy the Vampire Slayer themed project pan created by Jaylon and uh, it's a Fantastic Ladies collab too, which is a Facebook group of project panners. I'll leave a link if you want to join the Facebook group down below. If you do, you should read through the introductory posts explaining how the group works. It's lots of fun and I'm doing a couple of projects over there and following along with some projects I'm not doing but looking out at other people's progress. So it's a great group to be in. And I'm so excited that Jaylon came up with 30 prompts for this project and designed a really clever, fun, Buffy themed project pan because I'm a big Buffy fan. First off, I'm very sorry about background noise. There's lots of building going on and it actually made me think of the uh, phrase from, oh, these are out of order. God damn it. I have to fix that. I have to fix that or I won't be able to post this video. <laughs> That would drive me completely insane. Okay, um, from season seven, uh, from beneath you it devours because everyone in my housing estate is having work done because there's pyrite in the foundation of the buildings, which there should not be. So the background noise is just a factor, unfortunately. So I am really thrilled to be doing this project because I'm a huge Buffy the Vampire Slayer fan. I absolutely love it. It's my favorite TV show, hands down like Angel too, but Buffy has my heart and it's great to have a project like this. So there are seven months in the project themed after the, or because of the seven seasons of the show. And I've decided I'm going to kind of talk about each season in my upload each month. So this uh, month is obviously number one. So in season one, my favorite episode would be Witch, which is episode three. And one of the reasons I absolutely adore it is the end. Um, you get the scream that is added in to the theme song for the first few seasons of Buffy, which I think is so good. Having it layered in on top of the theme song is excellent. And I really miss it when it's gone in later seasons. And I generally added it myself. Just go, ah, <laughs> when it gets to that bit of the song in later seasons. So huge fan of that. Amy's great character, Amy's mom, the actress is really good and all the cheerleady bits and all that, it's so of its time. So this show came out and started in 1997. So this week is the 25th anniversary of the show. I was seven years old when it came out and also I live in Ireland, I don't live in the US, so it wouldn't have been aired straight away here. I'm not sure exactly how old I was when I first saw it, but I remember adoring it from the minute I saw it and being a pretty major fan by the time certainly that I went into secondary school and even before that you know if Buffy was on and you know it generally be reruns in the afternoon and things like that at that time I would watch them and you would kind of get to watch like the whole the first couple of seasons certainly over and over again you know if they were just you know 2 p.m on a Tuesday they'd play an episode or whatever so say over the summer holidays I'd uh, get to watch you know seasons one, two, maybe three, several times, you know, back to back <laughs> over the weeks. So it was uh, something I really, really loved. And then the new episodes premiered on a Thursday night on Sky One and I wouldn't miss one. And certainly, you know, I think maybe I was 14 when the last episodes came out and, you know, there was no way I would miss those. I recorded them on VHS because I wanted to keep them. And actually I used to have some partial box sets of the series on VHS, like box sets that I bought. And then I was very happy to get this um, box set of all the DVDs, which, you know, was a few years after. These were very expensive when they first came out. It was a few years after it came out. But I did, I really supported the show. I used to buy the, there was a magazine. <laughs> I used to buy it a lot, not every month, but a lot um, and there were these book books called The Watcher's Guides and I really really loved those. They just gave you all insight into the production process, the different um, technical things that were involved and that's one thing if you go back and watch the show now and you've never seen it before obviously there's some really dated stuff um, because it is 25 years old um, and obviously any of the special effects that were like made in a computer are not good 
but some of the technical effects, some of them are terrible, um, some of the, you know, physical effects in terms of prosthetics, in terms of costumes for different actors who are being demons and different things are terrible but loads of them are brilliant like really really good and you know some of the actors who are just very talented in that way would portray you know one or two demons in you know very complex costumes so you couldn't or uh prosthetics and things so you couldn't tell it was the same person twice but really really good so big big fan and i highly highly recommend you give it a go if it's not the kind of thing you're that into, what I might try doing is watching some of the Halloween episodes in October because obviously it's just, it's a horror show and it's, you know, that it fits in with that time of year. So um, it's really good. And like there's a shtick in, I think it's season two about like, oh, Halloween isn't a big deal uh, to demons and vampires and whatever, but like it has some great Halloween episodes. So I would highly recommend checking those out. I love the show for loads of reasons, but, you know, as Leonard tries to explain to Penny in The Big Bang Theory, uh, the central conceit of the show is that it's turning the idea of, you know, the archetypal woman who would be the damsel in distress, who would be the princess, who would be the victim, who'd need saving by a man, is the saviour. Sarah Michelle Gellar is this, like, physically tiny woman and she's playing a 16-year-old, she's young, um, I can't remember how old she is, but like she's she, she's not like a 30 year old playing a 16 year old. She's like in her early 20s or something or even a, just an older teenager or something like that. And she's this tiny little girl, little 16 year old girl, and she's killing demons and vampires, slaying vampires and protecting her friends, including protecting men. So and, you know, her whole town and the whole world and you know, if the apocalypse comes, beep me. She is literally saving the world. So it's flipping that basic thing on its head. And then loads of times throughout the, se the series, it flips, you know, different gender expectations, different expectations on its head, on their heads. And it really is just a clever show with, you know, fun, quippy dialogue, with interesting stories. And because of the supernatural elements, it can just really draw things out. So certainly in these early seasons, you have basically the issues that teenagers would deal with anyway, literally brought to life as a demon or as some kind of enemy that needs to be dealt with or some kind of problem that needs to be dealt with, a supernaturalization of ordinary problems. So it's really fun. And obviously I was a bit young for it, but I, I was certainly re-watching it all when I was a teenager and it was very relatable, some of the issues. And I think one of the magical things about it is that just reality is breathed into it in loads of different ways like I just found personally you know as a teenager having just my mom in the house it was very relatable some of the stuff between Buffy and her mother and um, you know you, a, a child a teenager in you know this typical white pick fence uh, type family that so many tv shows present as the only type of family people have unless they have straight up neglectful parents or are on their own for some reason is this very white pick offence, you know, dinner's on the table, six o'clock every evening, you're expected to go to school and do your extracurriculars and nothing else and all the rest of it. That's just not reality for everybody. And having, you know, a single mother um, who loves Buffy and does great things for her, but also drops the ball sometimes and doesn't get her, obviously doesn't know she's a vampire slayer. Um, and all that, you know, ordinary teenage stuff where you're like, God, my mom doesn't understand me. But like literally her mom doesn't know what she's going through because <laughs> it's a secret. So all that stuff, just there's some real life breathed into it. And it's really, really nice and really fun. Season one only has 12 episodes. You could bang that out in no time. Go give it a watch. I love it. So I've now spent just under 10 minutes explaining the concept of the project and talking about how much I love Buffy. And I think that's great because I already recorded this and it was over, it was nearly an hour long. I'm trying to condense down my love for Buffy by simply telling you, give it a go. It's loads of fun. And according to this book, it is one of the 1001 TV series you must watch before you die. Let me see, can I find it? I had it bookmarked when I watched it yesterday. Oh, look. 
Ali McBeal, Stargate, other great shows that came out the same year. So Buffy gets her own page. You can see her here slaying an uber vamp from season seven. And this particularly shouts out one of the best episodes, which is Hush, which is actually a prompt in this project from season four, which is genuinely terrifying and really good writing and really good acting and loads of fun. So you should give it a go before you die. Ooh. Um, but I'm not going to get too deep into the later seasons because I am going to kind of try and focus on season one for the first month and continue on with the rest of the updates, uh, our seven updates for the seven series seasons. So I put the 30 prompts for the project into my phone, into like random UX or something the app I have is called and pulled them up and then it took me quite a while to figure out what products I wanted to pull for each prompt. I think my first two pulls are a little weak and then after that it improves so bear with me. So the first prompt I pulled is Buffy, a badass product. So um, having literally just rewatched season one it does occur to me that Buffy, which is going to be a particular badass, ties up her hair. I have my hair in a claw clip here. Shout out to the 90s. Um, and I feel this shirt and my lip colour and certainly these browns would have been the only eyeshadow colour I would have like thought of wanting to wear in the 90s. I didn't wear makeup when I was seven. <laughs> and Buffy actually, in I think season two or episode two or episode three, has like a dark pink outer corner in her eyeshadow. I was like, that is beautiful. That is so cool. And you get a bit of the like icy lids or light blue lids uh, going on a few times as well. So very 90s, really love it. But anyway, so badass product. Buffy often ties up her hair, which is going to be a particular badass. And when I tie up my hair, it's often because it's a bit greasy. So I need a bit of dry shampoo. So this is a bit of a stretch, but... The Batiste XXL Volume Dry Shampoo and this is hardcore. This is not your ordinary dry shampoo um, and it's actually really hard to get it out. So it it really does uh, have an impact. I have other dry shampoos and actually my very favourite is just arrowroot, arrowroot powder which is like a filling ingredient for sauces and stuff and I find that's a really good dry shampoo but if I need something like super hardcore or if I want more volume and certainly voluminous hair is another feature of Buffy in season one kicking ass and taking names and um, that that one is very good so my goal on that is to finish it I'd say it's about half gone now I can't measure exactly because uh, obviously you can't see through the can the second prompt I picked is Anya so Anya, a rabbit themed product. So that's what she's afraid of. So this is a bit of a stretch. Um, <laughs> but it does say packaging, shade name, product name, etc. And Jaylon herself struggled to uh, pull a product for this. So I've decided to pull something very weird, which is the only remotely to do with rabbits makeup item I've ever wanted was the ColourPop Thumper palette. But I didn't order it because, you know, I have a few Colourpop things and I love them, but ordering from the US and everything, and I, I wouldn't order just one thing. Um, I would go for the free shipping and, and then like import taxes and blah, blah, blah. So I thought the colour story of that palette was lovely and the theming, you know, Thumper is nice. And the colour story then reminded me, when I saw this palette, it reminded me of the Thumper one. Now, obviously, this green is much darker. If you're familiar with the Thumper palette, it's like... Uh, cool tone browns I think a pink and a green uh, so I thought this was like the more mature indie shadow version so this is the sigil inspired by Tammy Tanuka lovely voice of a humble bird palette this is the mini version if you just if you haven't ordered from them before, them before you can order the 10 pan palettes with bigger like normal size pans or you can order the mini with mini pans I think that's genius and a nice way to try out the formula so I'm gonna I think it's like no pan left behind or whatever style this palette and just use every shade once because I have too much eyeshadow um in already established pro projects so I don't want to overwhelm myself so this palette is specifically not rabbit themed it's bird themed but it reminds me of a rabbit themed palette so it's all I've got so the third prompt I've picked is or pulled is the slayer a product that slays and straight away I knew what this would be you know the Becca highlighter this is a mini in c pop it's called now but champagne pop 
and I really thought this would be too deep for me. I am wearing it now. Um, and, you know, it's not, it's not necessarily, like, it's much darker. It's darker and yellower than my skin. But for a warm toned eye look like this, I think it goes really well with it and it's beautiful. So my goal on that is going to be 13 uses. I saw Ruth uh, Foley, her update or her introduction, she was uh, setting usage goals on some things of 13 uses for the 13 main characters. And similarly, we're pulling 13 prompts at a time for this project. Though if you, like me, hate some of those characters, AKA Riley, you can only pull 12 if you want it harsh but season four spoilers Riley sucks <laughs> um oh yay the fourth prompt I pulled is Scooby Gang an item if I didn't mention my goal on that was 13 uses yeah uh item an item that never lets you down Scooby Gang so for this I have decided to pick a nail varnish this is the Catrice more than nude translucent translucent effect nail polish here it is over nothing it's this really shiny this now when I filmed this video before it went out of focus here is it focusing on my face I think so so this nail varnish is lovely and it has never let me down I have topped it over all kinds of other um colors I really liked it this is it on its own really like it it's lovely I went out and bought other shades in this range and they're not as good as this they're still lovely but they're not as good as this so this is you know it hasn't let me down since so my goal is going to be 13 uses on this and I think I'll do that no problem if I do that and it has gone down noticeably I will then immediately repurchase this even before this one is empty because I love it that much and it's that good and Catrice is that affordable that I can be frivolous like that so the fifth product I have pulled, prompt I have pulled is Faith. Eliza Dushku, we love you. Um, a product that was once good but is now evil. And then maybe it changes again. So for this I've pulled the PS My Perfect Colour Concealer, Stick Concealer. I'm wearing it today, I really like it. The formula is so good. But the packaging is broken. Not just once, the lid. And I therefore constantly take it out of my drawer and just take the lid with me. But twice, the base is also broken and completely comes off. So thankfully this is functional um, like this. But obviously it would get disgusting and dirty if you didn't have the lid on. So this is something that might be decluttered soon and replaced with an identical version of itself. Because it is one euro fifty. I love the formula though so I'm gonna see can I stand the packaging being this broken for 13 more uses but big fan it's really good but the packaging is evil so number six I was telling my mom or I was watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer to refresh my memory about what's my favorite episode from season one to do this introduction and my mom came in and she's like oh you're watching Buffy and obviously like she has watched a lot of Buffy because I watched a lot of Buffy as a teenager and a child and she was saying, I was saying like, oh I love this episode, it was like the pack or something and uh, she was like, yeah, but you know the best episode? It's the one where it's all a musical. I was like, yes. <laughs> Hardcore agree. So prom the sixth prompt I've pulled is Once More With Feeling, which is the musical episode from season six. Spoiler favorite episode of that season <laughs> um, and an item you love so much it could make you break out in song so this I struggled with a bit I was like oh I love a lot of things but would I really break out in song about them and then I was looking at shade names so this is the Zoeva Premier palette look at it it's just so nice I love these palettes. I could break out into song about them. They're so cool. They're not doing these like really themed palettes at the minute. I hope they bring something like this back in the future. But this one is themed around performance. And you've got some beautiful colours here. I've picked a boring colour though. Just this matte brown from the bottom right here. But the reason I picked this shade is because it is called magisterial vibrato amazing you've also got melodious singer but i thought a matte cream was too boring so my goal is to use this 13 times 
which will obviously be very easy. Um, it's just a matte brown. Um, vibrato, if you don't know what it is, it's the like kind of shaking on the note um, thing that particularly opera singers do. And I thought that was very fun and fit the theme well and easy. I've got loads of other eyeshadows in other projects, but 13 uses of a matte brown. I can add that in on top, it'll be fine. So my seventh prompt that I've pulled is Hush, that classic and excellent episode from season four, a scary product. And the bad guys in Hush really are terrifying. I have to now try and pick up this product that I've just dropped on the floor, excuse me. And of course it was like really difficult to get. So this is the Ordinary AHA BHA Peeling Solution. It looks like blood. Love it. So this is an exfoliating um, treatment that you use like a couple times a week. Um, I haven't used it in ages and I'm a bit worried it could have expired. So. My goal on this is going to be to use it once and see is it expired and if not then I can increase my goal you know maybe 13 uses whatever um or actually maybe to finish because if it's not expired it will expire soon. So I'm scared of this both because it looks like blood and because it might burn my face because it might be expired but I'm going to give it one go and see and hopefully um, it's not and hopefully I can use it uh, obviously I'm gonna give it a go on a day where I have a few days where I'm gonna stay indoors afterwards because you know harsh exfoliants and if it if it's more harsh than usual because of expiration issues uh, could make you more sensitive to the Sun so I give like using it this weekend because I'm gonna be indoors all weekend Um, so prompt eight that I've pulled is the trio. So what are their names? Warren, Jonathan, Andrew. Um, that's terrible. I am um, big fan of the actors. <laughs> um, so a product with three pans and or an item you have three of. So I pulled a product with three pans. This is the Zueva face palette in the basic moment. And we've got a blush, bronzer and highlight. The highlight is a little overly similar to um, the other one, which is Champagne Pop. I am forgetting the names of things that I literally just mentioned, but it is much less intense. And they're not like too similar, but they are both warm toned. So ideally I wouldn't have both of these in a project at the same time, but 13 uses, I can handle that. Um, and I'm not sure if I've much other much more highlighter in any project other than my uh, Panland imprint which has a highlight in that palette uh, though that highlight is a bit overly glittery so I'm not sure how far I'm going to get on that so my goal is to use that 13 times and I definitely find you know a whole face palette like this to be convenient on days when I'm in a rush so I think that 13 uses won't be a problem at all even though I have loads of other like blush I have other bronzers in projects that'll be handy on the days I'm in too much of a rush to be pulling out loads of different things so the ninth um prompt that I have pulled is Mr Pointy so that's what Buffy calls her steak that she uses to slay vampires and it's a product that you have to sharpen so for this I'm pulling the Essence Stay 8 hour lip liner in 03 unforgettable so you might say oh no that's not a sharpening pencil because it is retractable and it is and it's this just nudie pink or I guess kind of not super nudie um but it has a little sharpener at the bottom and if I'm actually lining my lips rather than just using this as an all-over color I definitely do like to sharpen it before I use it so my goal on that is 13 uses. The next prompt is magic box, a magical uh, item or magic themed item. So I this I really struggled on. I was like, oh God, are any of my highlighters, do they have shade names that are magical, magical in any way? And then I realized, oh, maybe my Disney 
collab eyeshadow palettes have magical themed names so I've got the Colourpop It's a Princess Thing palette here and there are three shades I think with super magical names obviously kind of a lot of them are because the you know they're named after characters who maybe do something magical um, and that is one of the shades that I have picked which is Fairy Godmother, this pink shimmer in the centre. I'm not going to swatch it because I haven't swatched this palette yet because I want to take a particular photo of it unswatched before I use it for the first time. So that, there will be no update on that until May when I'm going to be taking that photo. I know that sounds ridiculous, but I'm going to Disneyland. I'm bringing the palette. You'll have to wait till May and then I'll be trying to use that shade 13 times. I love pink. That won't be an issue. The 11th prompt I've picked is the master, the oldest item in your collection or oldest item in a category. The master is the big bad from season one. He is so well played. The actor is great. He's super creepy looking. He's this really old vampire. He's trapped. He has vampire minions out doing his bidding to try and get him untrapped. And that's Buffy's big fight of season one and it's it's a great one to start with because it is much smaller scale actually than some of the other things she winds up fighting as the years go on um, and she's only 16 and goes up against this guy and it's it's fabulous so for this I think the oldest item in my collection is a an Elizabeth Arden face powder that I got in like 2007 and I'm not sure I would put that on my face so I've pulled this Elizabeth Arden, oh no, sorry, the face powder is Lancome, never mind. I've pulled this Elizabeth Arden palette, which I'm not sure how old it is because it was decluttered to me, but it is old. So it has four eyeshadows, a blush and a highlighter. Highlighter's garbage, hate it, all the rest really good. My goal is to hit pan on this shade because I already have great progress on it. It's what I have all over my lid today. And I'll put it next to the brown. And it reminds me of another shade that is definitely a competitor for oldest item in my, or one of the oldest items in my collection. And that would be from the Walking on Eggshells um, Wet n Wild uh, palette, the uh, eyelid or whatever, the, the shimmer, shimmery, beautiful rose goldy shell pinky kind of hybrid thing and I have it on my lids today and I really love it so this is really old will I keep it forever I think I probably will because I really love it it was decluttered to me by my partner's mother and I love that and I really like it I've used it so much because this was a great travel palette for years and we were long distance so for five years I was going back and forth and using this a lot apologies the light is changing dramatically because the clouds in the sky do I need I kind of feel like I need a light behind me but my light is broken anyway we're just gonna live with it Um, so that's for the master and that's a more ambitious goal than the rest to actually hit pan on something but I'm I'm close I'm close and it's an e easy shade to wear and I've already worn it twice because I filmed this video once when it was nearly an hour long um, and now I'm doing it again so the 12th prompt I pulled is the gift, an item that was a gift and obviously sister, sister, my sister gave me this for Christmas, beautiful shades and particularly this offshore shade just kind of elevates this from being just your average neutral palette, look at that stunning so this is a collab between Catrice and Jenny you can get it on I think just my look and parfum dreams those websites I think it's sold out on cosmetic for less I don't think you can get it in the states unfortunately so it's just six shades five regular neutrals and this stunning duochrome it's beautiful I would totally use this loads more but I just have too much eyeshadow and too many product projects so I'm gonna no pan left behind this and just use each shade once or at least once in this project and I'm sure I will do that quite quickly because I love that palette it's so easy and fun and then the 13th prompt that I have picked is the key an item that is key to your makeup routine so I have very oily skin 
powder is absolutely key to my makeup routine. I could not get by without it. So here I've got the Becca Hydra Mist um, setting powder. What's it called? Hydra Mist Set and Refresh powder. And you can see I don't have a huge amount left. It is a mini. I got it from TK Maxx. And I am aiming to finish this because there's not that much left. And I have a lot of different powders. I would never finish them if I just keep rotating between them, which is what I tend to do. So I think if I focus on this and use it up, that'd be great. And then I can refill this little uh, container with other loose powders for travel because it is a mini, which is great. So those are my picks for this project. I know so many people love this show. Some people have never watched it. You should get on it. But so many people love this show and I think this project would be a really fun way to talk about it. I have just started listening to the Buffering the Vampire Slayer podcast, which my sister told me to listen to years and years ago, but I just wasn't into podcasts then. I couldn't, re I couldn't really stand them, to be honest. And now I've gotten into several different podcasts that I really love. So I am now going to finish filming this video, put on a podcast about decluttering and try and clean my house. So podcasts have become more of my part of my normal life now and I am really enjoying it. So I think I will actually do a rewatch of everything more quickly than kind of the seven months of this show because I think they are still recording uh, the episodes for season seven of Buffering the Vampires there. Um, so I think I'd kind of like to catch up with them to season seven and then maybe get you know some of the final episodes have that the I'm, I'm waiting on the po new podcast episodes you know what I mean I uh, just feel more part of it but um I have really enjoyed re-watching season one and listening to I'm nearly at the end of the season one uh, podcast episodes and really enjoying them so I think I'm gonna maybe breeze through some of the rest and then I'll take notes about what my favourite episodes are and particular points to mention from each season and I am going to talk about that in uh, my updates for this. Ruth was saying and I think it's so true you know this project is loads of fun and that's the point of it and the theme is the point of it and I'm not necessarily looking to finish up loads of things obviously I have you know I have a goal to hit pan I have a couple of goals to finish things but they're you know they're not major things. I have higher goals uh, in other projects and part of project planning for me is just rotating through things and you know really getting into do I like certain formulas or not to help inform future purchases to remind myself how much I have and that I don't really need to be making future purchases sorry the lighting is all over the place here natural light you know how it is um but uh project planning is also you know part being part of that community with other people and here we'll have something to talk about not just makeup not just how we use our makeup which is loads of fun in and of itself but also a show that we love and that brings us together so i hope if you have never seen an episode of buffy that you give it a go if you you know i think if you've been a teenage girl there's just a lot in it that you can relate to in the first three seasons and you should give it a go obviously lots of it's dated and you know if you're not into horror if you're not into fantasy at all then it, it could not be your thing but some of the stuff is just so relatable and clever you know the mean girl is complex the heroine is a little girl the guy who you know looks like one thing is another the the nerd <laughs> is this phenomenal character who just blossoms throughout the show and hands down my favourite Willow is hands down my favourite character um, it, it's just lovely absolutely lovely and you should give it some time and if you've already seen it maybe go back and watch one or two of your favourite episodes um, because I think it's a show that just deserves more love than it got Hush that episode from season four was one of the only bits of the show that got real uh, acclaim and was critically re received very well and was uh, nominated for awards. Other than that, it was things like 
other production elements like the makeup obviously the makeup's phenomenal some of the prosthetics and things like that and um, but you know the central story the you know the episodes on their own didn't get the kind of critical acclaim that they really really should have at the time and um, and I think that's a shame so you you know you might not have heard about it but it is one of the shows you should see before you die and um, so I hope you're having a great day I hope you can squeeze some Buffy into it if you've got time um, and thank you so much for watching I really really appreciate it and to everyone who's doing this project or cheering people who are doing this project along I'm really excited for the next six installments so thanks Jaylon for starting this and for Ruth for encouraging me to Ruth for encouraging me to do it because it is easy, you know, you're setting up your uh, items and your goals for a project you decide and you can set some minimal goals. So I think my my 13 new goals are going to help me with this project a lot because I was a bit worried about, you know, setting myself up for failure by having too much on my plate. But 13 uses is totally doable. So I'm looking forward to hopefully knocking some of those out in this first month and having some exciting updates for you next month when we'll get to talk about season two. Thanks so much. How, hope you have a great day. Bye. Grr. Arr.